Christy, police say when they arrived, they found two men had been shot. Residents tell me it's a scene far too familiar in their neighborhood. As you can see behind me, crews are still working the scene where a Rankin County man is dead. Can we ask you why you pardon killers and not the Scott yeah. sisters? It's Phil Bryant's day and I'm going to enjoy it with him. It's a one trigger pull, one shot. The city of Jackson is taking the next step to make sure you're paying attention in school zones. In an effort to get people to put down this distraction, crews are installing warning signs come Monday. He says they'll do that by using promotional things, like giving away baseball cards, frisbees, and t-shirts. And it's promotions like these that he hopes will help increase attendance, getting people out to the ballpark and into these seats. Even if you just want to get a soda in Flora, you don't have too many options. And it's going to cost you a buck 25 at the only Pepsi machine in town. Erica, this is just one of the many if you see something, say something campaign signs that you can find on train station platforms and on billboards, urging people to speak up. Former Jackson police officer Monette Jefferson walked into the courtroom in cuffs, and a federal judge says that's how he'll remain. Violence at a Vicksburg daycare. Police say the surveillance video from Kitty City Child Care shows a nine-year-old boy kicking, biting, and punching a toddler and a baby, all while a daycare worker is out of the room or not looking. It's even more disturbing to see the action of this nine-year-old kid who just pretty much uh, ran rapid in this room uh, full of kids uh, attacking that wheel uh, for a period of 10 to 15 minutes and, and it went unnoticed. Take a closer look. Here you see the boy make sure the worker isn't looking. He then kicks the little girl, picks her up, and does it again. Next, you see him sitting with the first victim's baby brother. He starts biting, punching, and shaking the little boy. Police say the children had bruises and one even had a busted lip. So their father, 29-year-old Jamie Williams, wanted to confront the boy. Here you see Williams walk in the room, looking for the nine-year-old. But instead, cops say he picks the wrong kid, slapping an innocent six-year-old, and takes off. Jamie was very upset, understandably so, but that is not the way you settle your differences uh, with uh, attacking the child. Police arrested Williams Tuesday. He's charged with simple assault and is now out on bond. Cops have arrested the daycare worker, 49-year-old Sandra Tavillian, and charged her with two counts of child neglect. She's now out on bond and has been fired from the daycare. In Vicksburg, Kylie Knowles, Fox 40 News. When the Bridgeport Bluefish take to the mound tomorrow night against the York Revolution here at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, they hope to have success on and off the field. The Bluefish have already hit the ground running this season as they're in first place in the Atlantic League. General Manager Ken Shepard says they have two goals this season, one to win the league championship and two to have success at the game. He says they've done a lot in preparation for this season. He tells me they've had everyone from maintenance crews to food vendors out for opening day. Oh, and... Don't forget to check out the new wall in the outfield. This year's Bluefish business model is Get Go Generate. They've used it to encourage fans to get out here and check out the action on the field. The general manager says their mission statement is to create memories for their guests and results for their marketing partners. He says they'll do that by using promotional things like giving away baseball cards, frisbees, and t-shirts. And it's promotions like these that he hopes will help increase attendance, getting people out to the ballpark and into these seats. I spoke with authorities who are struggling with the tragic loss of their friend and also neighbors who are extremely shaken up that this deadly shootout hits so close to home. Pearl police officer Mike Walter went to work this morning, but after bullets flew at the Colony Park apartments, his wife and daughter will never see him again. One neighbor describes what she saw from her back porch. Just went to shoot and it was just like pop, 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 pop and you can see the bullets coming out of the wall. I was sitting on my balcony. Police came to arrest 30-year-old Carnell Gaines Jr. for sexual battery and searched his apartment for child pornography. When he wouldn't come to the door, officers entered and prepared to tase him. Gaines was hiding in the bathroom and when police opened the door, he was waiting. The individual in the bathtub raised the firearm and shot the two officers. And within the hour, investigator Walter was dead. 
Investigator Dave McCarley was also shot in the hand and leg, but is expected to make a full recovery. The suspect was shot to death. The Rankin County District Attorney speaks to the victim's character. And know both of the officers who have been shot. They are good family men uh, who were out here trying to protect and serve uh, when they were, you know, in, in a sense, ambushed. Fellow lawmen struggled to find words to express their heartbreak. For Lieutenant Butch Townsend, Tuesday brought back terrifying flashbacks from the town's last tragedy, the Pearl High School shooting. 35 years, uh, I've, I, I don't, okay. never had a day like today. Closest thing to it, I guess, was October 1st, 1997. For now, the shots fired at the Colony Park apartments leave a small town shaken as they remember the man who put it all on the line and never came home. In Pearl, Kylie Knowles, Fox 40 News.